How you doing everybody? Randy Richard in the shop and today we're going to do the machining on the journals. We're going to do the machine at least on this journal. Have the boring bar set up uh, as you saw in the last video how it's all clamped and secured and all that and the lineup. This is the boring bar I, I intend to use. I have a left hand or a right hand tool in there right now. Sorry, right hand tool. And I intend on feeding it with the quill. Uh, so I've set the quill stop over so this bar will clear. Now this is this tool is in a little bit, a quarter inch or so. So, so that's my stop so I, I don't hit anything, right? And our retraction is back to almost where we want to be. Uh, there is a ridge here from where this, the journal part has worn. And it's real heavy on the bottom and hardly anything up here. Uh, this is the original machine surface, which we want to maintain. Now, I have another sh bar that I made a while ago, but it's shorter. It's about six inches long. But I have an angle on this. I ground an angle in it. Uh, it was just square, and I, I posted a picture on Instagram about it. And I, I reground that slot. So it has a, I don't know, 20 degree, I think a 20 degree angle on it. So it reaches out. And I can use this to come up to this shoulder. It's just, it's long enough to clamp in there and just reach. And I can come up, the last little bit has to be machined. I also have this bar. This is a 12 inch bar. And I wasn't going to use this. It's a one inch bar. It has a straight quarter inch bit hole on each end. A straight one here and an angled one here. Uh, but like I said, it's a quarter inch bit. And this one's a 5 16 bit. It's a little bit bigger. So I could use this one also to do this end with. It has enough, but I have to reach that quarter inch bit out quite a bit. So I'm worried about chatter with this one. That's why I'm not using it. It's too long to come all the way back to the end here. We'll see if I have to use this or not. If I really have to, I can always cut this off, but I don't really want to. Have it slowed down with a pulley. I might even slow it down a little more, but I can control this. Uh, we're getting a lot of shake there, but with a VFD I can maybe get a speed where it it's not going to shake too much. Otherwise I'll have to be really, really slow. There's no shake and no vibrations at all there. And so that will all depend if we have enough horsepower to cut that. Otherwise I'll change the belt again and drop Tested it down to the slowest speed. I, I can use the feed, so we'll try that. And we're ready to go here, so I just got it barely touched there. And I'll make a pass and we'll see how that is. That's a real good speed. Uh, it's there's no no vibrations or shaking going on and it's feeding right along. This is just a pass to find out where it's real heavy and such. So far it's looking pretty good. And now having the stop set, it will automatically kick out uh, down here before it will hit anything. But I'm ready to do it if I have to. All right, here it's slowing down, so I'm going to have to change the belt to the slower speed so I have a little more torque on it. I mean, it's working, but... Yeah, that's that's pretty good. It kicked right out. So mostly uh, just here in this quad was upper 180 degrees roughly was cutting. All right, I dropped it to the lowest speed for the head and I adjusted it five thousandths. And the feed seems to work pretty good, so we'll just keep going with the feed. This is going to be a slow process because I'm going to take this easy. I got to probably adjust it ten thousandths, uh, and that's this. This dial reads diameter, so really only two and a half thousandths cut.
We'll go 10 this time. That's starting to take that hollow spot off of the that beginning there. That's going to take that out or part of it. Not on top yet and nothing on the bottom so far. This cuts 15 thousandths of off the diameter and I slowed the feed rate down. I'm going to take a look at it here. I still have a hollow spot. It's a little one, not, not too bad. Maybe a square inch. So I'm going to need to take off a little bit more. I think I'm going to change the high speed steel tool and see if I can get a little smoother finish on the last few cuts. All right, I changed to this bar here, the one that was kind of short and with a high-speed steel tool in it. I just took one little light cut here and it, it's a much better finish also. And since I need to take off more, I'll be doing the rest with a high-speed steel to see if I can get that finish more like this, a uh, much smoother uh, bearing type surface. Um, smoother it is, the better it is. Uh, so I'm gonna whittle this on down to almost finish dimension. Then we're gonna come in and take some cuts on here. All right, I changed my tool to my left-hand tool, and I'm going to come in here and clean all this up and get this to the same diameter here. Now, I ended up with a little, you could see it, I ended up with a little bit of chatter, and it's only in this zone here. The rest is pretty good. I don't know why. A little bit of chatter in here. Anyway, we're just gonna clean all this up to the shoulder, and it should be good. Still have a little tiny hollow spot right here, but it, it's not very big, and I think I'm going to leave it. And I'm about five under. I'm at seven, about two seven twenty two inches, seven twenty five thousandths. Uh, I was shooting for two thirty as a minimum, but this is the way it goes. And I'll bring that one down to seven two. So I'll bring it down the same size uh, whenever I end up here. And we ended up with about a thousandth of taper. Not too bad, actually. I think we're good on this end. Now to turn it around. All right, I've flipped over the yoke. This is the end where the drive shaft goes through in the gear. And that and this is to rotate the drum uh, for mixing. Uh, so we have uh, two strap clamps on here and two machinist jacks underneath here. And what I did here to align this end, this is not round. This is, has a taper in it. This is the journal. And I have uh, some bearings 
races in here, the tapered roller bearing races. And that and the outer part of this is also machined. I could have went around that, but that's a very small area. So what I've done is uh, I had a piece of an inch and a half uh, stainless stock here. And it has a, a few thousands run out, uh, two or three. And it's not too bad. And I, I fitted the uh, bearings on here. I made some stop collars just to hold the bearings in place. So this is uh, fitted real nice in here. And I'm using that to uh, align against. So I have uh, about three inches of good area here. Uh, I can go across the top. And what I did is I marked th this here rough line right there. And I use this line on the top and on the side. It's about halfway in the run out. Uh, so I have a nice consistent line and uh, I think it's uh, working out worked out pretty good uh, Just like before on the other end. I'm using the side of this groove, which I stoned so make sure there's no burrs It's nice and clean uh, This you know t-slot and the two little pins In my surface gauge right they sticking out Up against that edge and that gives me a reference for the table and set to zero and I slide it along like so and I'm about half a thou uh, you know off uh, and what I've been having to do is I've having to rotate this whole thing pivoting it with uh, angle plate in this plane for the top rotate it up and measure across the top like so Set my indicator to zero on the high spot. Well, I'm sorry. Push the pins back up so you can slide on the table. Just zeroing it out on that. And then I come on down to the other end and run across that. And I'm less than a half a thousandth on the, hot, on the up and down here. And that's in this plane here. And that I just loosened the bolt on the angle plate and rotated it up and down. And I used the high the machinist jacks underneath to adjust it uh, gradually. We're all uh, clamped in place now. Everything's tight and I'm actually ready to uh, ready to machine the journal now. I'm going to remove this just to kind of show you what I did. So that's just a I just took a piece of two inch aluminum board it to size put a set screw to lock it on. I had a couple washers big washers back there spacers. There's the other bearing and another collar. I'm going to slip those bearings back off. Slip the shaft out. So that, uh, that worked out pretty good. All right, now I'm aligning the head and the yoke, right? Uh, so they're aligned together. I'm on the bearing race inside here and I'm using just a Little stare at drop indicator back style indicator setup and just going around the bearing. Now I'm pretty close, I'm within a couple thousands uh, here. Uh, I'm wondering if the bearing might be out around a little bit. Uh, I'm going to clean this surface here that has been machined and I'm going to. Uh, run around that and I'm going to put a different indicator on a little more accurate than this one. All right, I put a half thousandth uh, test indicator on there and I'm centered on the center line here, but the bearing housing has about five thousandths of difference between uh, the horizontal width and the vertical width. Uh, so I, I'm with less than a half a thousand vertical pretty much right on the money on that and horizontal i'm right on the money on that also uh or within a half a thousands uh so i'm going to call that the center line um, this surface here is it was machined at one time but there's a collar that goes on and i think that collar might have rubbed 
And so the reading I get on that is not very good either. I'm just going to have to go with what the best I can do. And since I, the, this is about the best I can do. <laughs> so uh, we're going to, we're going to go with that. All right. We're going to start with the carbide right hand tool in here. Uh, this is the largest end versus this end that due to the taper. We're going to shoot for 2.725. Uh, that's roughly what the other end is. So it's, you know, varies a little bit, but uh we end up with a little bit of taper over there a couple thousands but uh, so we're going to shoot for approximately the same here and uh just checking for clearance now that's the tool i have it set right there's a little high spot right there but we have good clearance and i've set my maximum stop to this point here we have a little room here on the yoke so we're go we'll back off here and start with about 10 thousandths cut and see how she goes. Fine tune the RPM there. Speed it up later for this first couple passes just to get our feel for where we're at. And we're getting a little touch. Now, I'm holding that, when it's near the end, I'm holding that hand wheel so it doesn't just spring right back. Uh, so when it trips, I'm holding it and it, it just comes back a little bit and then I ease it back. I'm gonna roll right to 20 thousandths and that's on the diameter. There we go, we got cut right away. We'll slow it back down now a little bit. Must be cut. It's not cutting on this side. It must be cutting on the other side. There, that'll make it a little easier to see. Two seven forty, so uh, we're nice and straight cut, boy. Uh, actually, it's actually that's yep nine tenths uh, taper. So that's about one thousandths taper. So that's not too bad, and uh, we still can take off another fifteen to be down to our measurement. So we might get most of this all, all cleaned up. <laughs>
Well, we still have a hollow spot on the bottom. We must might end up with that and because I'm only going to take it down to what I need to take it down to. Uh, so we match the other end. So a small hollow spot. We have a small hollow spot on that, that one, which is really pretty minor. Well, you guys, this was a great project. Uh, getting this done on the journals, I, I really had my doubts whether I'd be able to do this or not. The modeling uh, infusion really helped uh, doing the modeling. And of course, building the plate uh, was a big project in itself. Just, um, you know, it's a lot of work to do that. And uh, getting these done was, is just amazing. Uh, the bearing blocks are, will be next, and I don't think they will be as much of a challenge uh, compared to this. This is a big project for a mill like this, uh, but they, it sure worked out good. Um, uh, so, uh, <laughs> stay tuned for the, the next videos, uh, of course, on the cement mixer, and we'll get the bearings made as soon as the stock arrives. Uh, we'll get those uh, going and everything. Uh, please check out the Merchant Bar. Uh, I got t-shirts, sweatshirts, colors, coffee bugs on there. You know, help support the channel, please. And uh, I do have dovetail cutters and scribes. Um, I just have a few dovetail cutters in stock uh, and uh, some of my scribes still. And I'm going to be making the new, the old style scribes again. Um, the screw together ones. Uh, they'll be probably a few months away, but uh, but I'm going to make some more. I'm, I've been working on that, but I've really been concentrating on the cement mixer. And uh, But I do have some dovetail cutters in stock, and uh, I'll be making more of those uh, since I get the mill back uh, in shape here. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Thanks for watching, and uh, please subscribe. Click that notification bell uh, to keep up to date with the cement mixer. And I post some pictures on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram. Uh, too, if you want. Uh, you might get a little heads up of what's coming down the line. Uh, so uh, thank you guys, and we'll see you in the next one.